me bring you up to speed. We think a really good deal. Metal in my eye that I couldn't get out. Not too shabby. Now I just gotta figure out the pin system. It's a lot of work. Oh, well, <laughs> work is hard. Okay, so I'm back on that. Now, if you remember a few episodes back, I had this problem. It was all wiggly. So what I need to do is eliminate that wiggle. One of my viewers, uh, you know who you are, had this great idea. I don't know if they want me giving them a shout or listen name, so I'm not gonna. Uh, I have the great idea of uh, attaching a bracket to the tailgate to help with this part of it. Genius idea, love it. So what I did was I went to the hardware store and I got this, this heavy duty gate latch. It wasn't cheap, it was like 20 bucks, but I got two of them. So I am, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bracket, and I'm gonna attach it to the tailgate there, and then I'll put some sort of pin to go into it so it, when it goes in, it just, whoop. My thumb's too fat for it to drop, but I think you get the point. So locks there. And I'm gonna put a second one somewhere down in here. I think if I, I don't know, maybe I can make a bracket off the side of this and put it there. Now it sticks out a little bit. It, I should, it might be better if I put it in here, but I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can fit that, so. And then I am, I'm gonna still gonna try to cut this if I can, just so it's a little shorter. And then I'll probably just weld this to this with a couple of brackets right here maybe, so. That's the game plan. It's almost too easy. It could change. Sometimes you gotta do that, but uh, but thanks again to that viewer who came up with that idea for the uh, bracket on the tailgate. I love that idea, so. So yeah, enough talking, let's get crack a lacking. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Look at this little gem that I got at uh, the junkyard. Boat Boy gas tank. On the other side, snow go. Gasoline can. Pretty cool. Dude, I saw this. And this looks like a good can. Ooh, it's a six gallon. It's even bigger than I thought it was. Um, but I don't see a like a copyright year or whatever. But if anybody knows, well, let me know. You can see I got a wasp nest to clean out in there, but it looks like it just you pull this out, then you can flip it around. Like so. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera and do this one-handed. It's not working too well. Like that, and then you got your spout. And then you can drop it in there like that. Maybe it doesn't work like that. I'm not going to dig that out. That's great. But yeah, if anybody knows anything about these or knows the year, I'm just kind of curious. Message me. Let me know. All right, fast forward a little bit. Here's my piece that I welded to, nice and thick. I welded bolts on the back side, so I don't got to worry about holding them. They're obviously not the same length, but I don't care. So, this is going to go back here, nice, high, and tight. I was going to come here, but I think it just, it's more hidden back here. I can pull it off. So that's what I'm going to do. And then also, if it, was, if it was here, I mean, the tailgate arm coming down might hit it, you know. Here, I've, I looked at it when I opened up the tailgate, and I got a little bit more room. Now I can weld a handle to this, something that's a little easier um, for someone to grab and open this up. So if I just put that there and close, boy, it's hard to do in tape at the same time. Sometimes I don't think I need a camera stand when I do. Anyway, you can see that's gonna go like there. No, oh, whatever, you'll see. <laughs> Man, I'm good at this. All right, there it is. I had to notch this so this can open all the way. But there it is. But because I got this piece of flat in here to help strengthen this, I don't think it's a big deal if I ground that away a little bit, so. So yeah, now I need to make this go to there. Oh yeah, it looks good. I need to attach it to this some way, somehow. All right, fast forward a little bit. 
I cut that little piece of rod that came with the latch. You can see that I welded it up. I just put it in place and I tacked it and looked at it and made sure it looks semi straight. It is semi straight. So, and as you can see, it hits the bar. That's the only problem. It hits the bar right here. So I rounded. You can see I rounded the bottom corner on both sides a little bit, and it helps. But you can still see the witness marks here. So that's bothers me a little bit. It's going to scratch it when it when we paint it. I'm not sure what to do about that. But you can see it. It hits it. You just keep pushing, and it goes up, and it latches in. Give me a minute. You know, and it's obviously not coming out. So now, though, I still have that. So here's where the other one comes in. We'll put one up here, and that should help with this quite a bit. Well, I got annoyed with it, so look what I just did. Lift that up. Look at that. It doesn't hit anymore. Honestly, <laughs> I just got annoyed, and it's going to bounce a little bit. But I just grabbed it with both hands, and I just... I lifted pretty hard. I grunted a bit, but that's okay. Even if it does bend that tube a little bit, it's still, <laughs> it's worth it to get rid of all that. Bouncing around and hitting that other bumper and scratching paint. So, we'll mark that part done. All right, now that we got this latch done, which I put a little tab on there, it's so nice. I need to put a latch between here and the tailgate so it stops doing that. Now, what I was going to do, open this back up, I was going to put this latch just like I did down there on the tailgate right there. But honestly, I mean, look at that. I mean, you're not going to see it because this is the tire is going to be in the way, but when you do open it, you see this big ugly latch right in the middle of this international scout i don't like that that bothers me so i think i'm gonna switch it i'm gonna put this right there now you gotta be careful you don't walk into it when it's open and then what i'm gonna do here there's already holes here for it i'm just gonna do a little loop or hoop whatever you want to call it a little u-bolt kind of deal it's less is more with that it just won't be so big and ugly blocking that beautiful international scout logo so so yeah i think i'm gonna do that i'm gonna get ready i'm gonna weld this to here make sure it's somewhat straight and then uh put it in place and then figure out how far out i gotta come out with this little u-bolt i'm gonna make Okay, so the game plan for this custom U-bolt that I gotta make. You can see the bolt on the left has got more threads than the one on the right. I just took my tap and die set and I made them longer. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the heads off these bolts. And the reason I cut more of those threads, come on camera, get in there. So I want as much adjustment throw as I can possibly get. Now, some of you are probably wondering, well, this is just thick sheet metal. You don't need that many threads to adjust it, you know? Well, what I'm actually going to do is on the back side, I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch by, what is this, quarter inch by one and a half on the back side, like this. I'll drill a couple holes so I can spread out the weight on this. So now, some of you might be wondering, well, you should probably sandwich it and do it on both sides, right? Well, actually, I think most of the weight is going to come from pulling. Because what I want to do is this. I want it when you close this, and this one closes, you have to take and push on this tighter just push on the edge of the tire up just a little bit to lock it. That way it's tight, you know, and it just shakes less. But also, when you go to open it, you have to open up this one first, and then hopefully it springs back and stays open. And then go to this one. That way you don't have to have both hands at the same time trying to do that latch and that latch. It's just, in my eyes, a little easier to open. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully this works. <laughs> Let's find out. All right, so there they are. You can see it with the, it's obviously the bolt and I've got to wash it up. Then you can see the bar that I've got in place here. So yeah, so now it's adjustable. I can go in and out a little bit if I need to. Now I'm actually gonna cut the heads off and then uh, where'd that bar go? There it is. 
that'll take, you know, cut that bar the appropriate length. Hold it onto here. Hopefully when you hold it, it all clips nice and it just pulls this tighter in just a wee bit. It works the way we want it to. You know what I hate? What'd you do? I can't find my safety goggles. I know I'm blind is bad at times, but dang nabbit. Where in the Sam Hill did those things go? I just had it. Seriously. I'm, I'm gonna have a fit. What's wrong with me? Oh, I'm seriously gonna get upset. It's probably something under, under something stupid. You ever had that or you just can't find it? And you know you just had it two seconds ago? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a fit. Why would I put them there? I don't know. All right, so there it is. I ground it down a little bit. I know I ground the weld, but it's still, I left a gap there so the weld filled it. So it should still be structural. I had to make it look pretty, didn't I? So here, hopefully this one lasts first. Very good. That one did. That one did not, which is okay. It's exactly what I wanted. Now, Look at that. Tighter bounces a little bit, but nothing like it. You know what I mean? It's like a rock compared to before. Now the question is, I wonder how hard this will be to lift. I have to push in there a little bit. But not too bad, but there it unhooked there. I do here. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. That was, that was the right call putting this one here and then the loop there. It's not as imagine that big hook being on there it would look ugly that's not as bad i can live with that and two that's nice because the holes were already there for it so all right so far so good look at that even with one felt swoop if you push on this it'll go just pushing the tire first i'll weld a big old, bigger like little tab like i did on that one that's probably the next thing i'll do but hot dog I love it. Sweet. That's hot. <laughs> love it. Much later. All right, skip ahead a lot. I, sorry guys, I'm just, I'm just go, go, go on this. So you can see I welded in these tabs and then I just put this and the chops on just chop chopped it i did it at a slight slight angle this way just so when it open and closes it just won't bind up then so it should open and close nice everything's super hot ow it hot that hurt you're a dumbass anyway just trust me it works so i also have been working on the back brakes so i got the back brakes pretty much done and look at this i placed this hose my hands clean and I watch after I touch it. Oh, well, yeah, see? It's just this disintegrating. So yeah, it's time for a <laughs> time for new holes. But I do, I just gotta keep trucking. Sorry I'm skipping ahead quite a bit, but I'm in go mode, man. We gotta go. Alright, so I gotta plug these holes on the end here. So what I just did was I cut a hole. All right, cut a piece of flat. It's about, it's actually about a quarter inch thick. It's pretty thick. It's not, it doesn't need to be that thick, but it is. But then I just welded a little tab there so it fits tight and I just slowly ground it down more and more until I get just hammered in so it's nice and so it's flat. So now because I've got that gap around there, I can fill that with weld. Come on, focus. I can fill that with weld. And because I'm filling that gap, it'll still be structurally sound. I can grind it flat and smooth. So I know I'm grinding the weld, but once again, I'm filling this gap so it'll still stay into, not a structural piece of metal. So no worries. 
Here we go. All right, whoop, ooh, that's hot, don't touch that. <laughs> there it is, right there. So I just filled in that hole, those holes so I can get it as flat as possible so there's less grinding to do. Less grinding is better. There it is, there's the end result. Nice and flat, and I just took the edge off around the edge of it. All right, so I got it up there after making my cut right there and I reinforced it more because it was, it was too wiggly. It's just the hitch was giving when I was stepping on it when I put a, receive, a ball in the receiver. Now she's like a rock, I love it. But when I put it back all back together, I went to test it out, make sure everything's covered, all my bases, you know, great, that opens nice. You know, it's, it's nice, that's shorter now, and less titch in the leg. And I went and I opened this, and it stops right there, and you can see it. That's because it's hitting there now, and I didn't think of it. Look at that, if I would've cut it over like not even an inch more, wouldn't yet. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna dimple this ever so slightly. Sorry, brother, <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but I am, I'm gonna dimple this. It's just gonna be the easiest instead of cutting this back and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, other than that, you know, I mean, this still jiggles a little bit, but not as bad as it did. And it just, it is, it's, it's like a rock and it looks sharp. I'm pretty happy the way that, that tube lined up. I mean, other than, you know, that tailgate hitting it, but, but it is. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I was just hoping to get the, get the checkbox on that tonight done and then that tailgate hits it. Son of a biscuit. All right, so there's our fix. What I just did was I, I sliced it and I take my ball peen and I hit it, slice it again, ball peen, slice. I did that a few times until it doesn't hit anymore. Just barely misses it, but yeah, well, that works for me. So I will, I'll weld it up. I'll weld it up and I'll grind it and make it look somewhat pretty. Sorry, brother. <laughs> I messed up on that one. Hope you forgive me. All right, now that I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm done with that bumper. Now that I think about it, I know I'm not done with that bumper, but I'm tired of working on that thing. <laughs> I'm just, it's kicking my butt. It's time to work on the seat belts. So you can see I've got a point down here and I gotta make a point here and here. But it should, I sat in it with my big caboose and it, uh, I don't know, it's got plenty of room, I guess. You know, you can still slide the seat forward yet before I start kissing the seat, before I start kissing the steering wheel with my belly. So yeah, um, I'll weld that point up next, I guess. I'll drill a hole and weld a nut onto there for that. I'll do the same thing for the housing down here and uh, away we go. I'll have to copy it for the other side too. Slowly but surely, <laughs> getting this thing out of my garage. All right, so there I got one hole drilled. And, oh, there I got the other hole drilled. I got my nut and my bolt and I'm just gonna do that. Oh, come on, Nick, get the camera going right. I'm gonna do that. Uh, that's why I drilled the hole through it, just to make sure that, you know, if the bolt's a little longer than that, it can go through without any problems. I'll uh, clamp this, tack it, make sure it looks good, and weld it up around. We'll bolt up the seat belt, make sure it looks fine and dandy. All right. Welded, welded. Now I just gotta let it cool down a little bit. This one's kind of cool. And then uh, you can see I started bolting up the seat belt, fold it up, show you what it looks like.
works. <laughs> I'm happy with it. And it should. It should have enough. Oh, yeah. It's got plenty of slack where I can still slide forward quite a bit. Awesome. Awesome. I feel safe. Well, it looks good on you, though. All right. Now that the seat belts are done, i got to finish the, actually this front bumper. My brother wanted a little... I don't know what you call it. That's another bar going across. So I've got two of these made up. There's the bar right there. So I'm going to tack those into place, make sure it looks level, weld it, and then I'll cut that bar to length, then squeeze it in there and weld it. Hopefully it looks good. There. Now I think the front bumper is truly, truly finished. I mean, other than putting bolts back in it, but fabrication wise, I think it's done. So that top bar that I just did, I think we we're going to go a little higher with it, but honestly, I ran out of material. Honestly, I think it looks good like that. It doesn't overpower the grill then, you know what I mean? So I think that grill looks cool. And it is, it's a nice little accent piece for the bumper. So brother, I hope you like it. If you don't, well... That's life, I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, fast forward a whole bunch. Uh, I replaced some uh, heater core hoses, the top radiator hose. I know it's a flexi hose. Some people don't like that, but that's that's what it came with from, that's what uh, Rock Auto offers. We wanted to replace them just because who knows how old they are and they, you know, uh, the bottom radiator hose, though, they give us the wrong one. It's not long enough. And honestly, it's got that goofy curve. They give us a flexi hose for that, too. I don't know if we could have pulled it off even if it was long enough. It would have been, I mean, look at the, look at the curves in that thing. It's ridiculous. Um, so we're getting close to starting this thing up and being able to drive it. I finished the brakes today. I did the old bench bleed on the master cylinder. All the drums have been turned, they all got new shoes, they've all got new wheel cylinders. So now, I wanna be able to start it up and actually uh, see if it'll get warm and suck some of that coolant in. So let's see, it's an electric fuel pump. Let's see if it comes up to the filter. Yep, there it is. It actually looks kinda clear too, that's a miracle in itself. All right, let's just turn the key. You know, I should probably, uh, probably got to hit the throttle and everything else. I don't even know if that's hooked up. Is it? Uh, yeah, it is. So let's just, let's just pump it and see what happens. What do we got to lose, right? <laughs> this gas pedal is much to be desired. All right, I'm not ready for this. Okay, I got that gas pedal fixed. We're just gonna pump it and pray. Oh, that didn't take long, that's awesome. It's got no exhaust. Well, I mean, it's missing the muffler out back. Oh, she fired right up, I like that. I just gotta let her warm up. Hopefully she doesn't have any coolant leaks or anything like that. Let it run a bit. Like I said, she's got no exhaust. And we cut that uh, <laughs> buffer all and she was pretty trash. We gotta take a look at the rest of the exhaust too. We will, we'll let this warm up. Check for leaks. Pray that she's good to go. Just a mess when I dropped that, <laughs> that radiator hose. I just made a mess. You try to get the bucket under there and it just, you got a 50-50 shot, right? All right, anyway, let's let this sucker warm up. See what happens. All right, so you can hear it. It's got a, what I'm hoping is a valve train tick. At some point, I do, I think I'm gonna pull the valve cover and just check it out. I think my thermostat opened up, it bubbled up and it sucked back down. I added a, quite a bit of water to it. Yeah, it's there. Um, still doesn't look like it's leaking. Which is a good thing. Um, but it is, that 
that that tick I just hope it's a valve train tick. I'm hoping I can just adjust the valves and cure that, I'm hoping. But I want to say that it's starting to go away a little bit, but I I just think I'm getting used to the sound of it. <laughs> Just hoping it would warm up and if it was a lifter that was stuck. You know who long who knows how long this thing has been sitting before we got our hands on it. But yeah. I'll let it run a little longer, then I'll shut it off. And maybe tomorrow or something. I'll pull the valve cover and just take a look at the uh, valve train, see if there's anything loose. Alright, it's so the next day. As you can see, I have the valve cover off and uh, just checking the valve or the rocker arms, anything loose, and right there, there's the culprit. That has got to be our noise, I'm sure. I'm sure she's rattling away. But as you can see, this is a rail type rocker arm system. So I obviously can't tighten it from the top. Probably have to, re I gotta research it and double check, but it's probably from. There's got to be an access panel or something on the side. I don't know. So I'm going to dig around and see, but I mean, that's got to be, honestly, you know, I'm happy to find that. I was scared it was like a knock, like an engine knock or something. I thought it was this. I was pretty sure, but I'm not going to lie. I wasn't 100% sure. So I am, I'm happy I found that. I just got to research now how to adjust that. Adjust it, turn the engine over, check the other ones, you know, because some... Valves are opening and closing, whatever. And then uh, put the cover back on it, run it, and hopefully that noise goes away. All right, so I dug around, I found the book, so I can try to see if I can adjust that. And after reading, um, when they are noisy, the lifters, in other words, um, when they are definitely noisy, a lifter that is not functioning properly may cause loud clacking. Black clock -like noise uh, uh, result of excessive lash. Plunger is stuck. Check valve. Oil maybe contain air. Long story short, uh, they don't listen to anything to adjust this. They just keep pointing, well, for the most part, to the lifters. And when you read here, because I, I, I looked on this thing, there's no way to adjust, adjust these things. And there's no, like, access panel on the side. So I'm like, well, how do you adjust these or access the lifter? Right here. Uh, lifter, blah, 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 blah. The lifters are removed by removing the valve cover, rocker arms and brackets, push rods and cylinder head. So I'm gonna pull the head off this thing if I wanna get access to that one lifter, which they say is probably my culprit. Now there could be dirt in it, you know, so I'm not gonna pull the head right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little irritated. I'm pissed off! I gotta go through all this just for one rocker arm that's being a little noisy, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run it for now. We're just gonna use it, get on it a little bit, and hope and pray if there that there is something in that lifter and that it just comes out and just starts working. So I'm gonna put the valve cover back on. I'm gonna put everything back together. Where for now, we're just gonna run it. All right, now that we know that there's not much we can do at the moment at least for that uh, little tick in the valve train with that loose uh, rocker, uh, while I was running it last night, I noticed the uh, charging system's not working. So, I mean, as you can see, well, maybe you can't, but by the different size gauge wire going together and all the electrical tape, this is not, you know, I mean, I got red ground wires. <laughs> uh, this is not the best wiring job on a vehicle, obviously. So before I just go and start replacing the alternator and all that fun stuff, let's take a look at some of the wiring and see if we find anything completely suspect. Voltage regulator doesn't look half bad i don't know <laughs> so let's look at the wiring and just go from there all right so i'm looking at the wiring on this thing and i look at closer at that alternator wait a minute i know this style plug-in this isn't international this is a gm 
And sure enough, I look on, just for fun, I look on Amazon or just stuff online to see a picture of a alternator. And sure enough, it doesn't look anything like that and it's outrageously priced. So I bet you what they did is, they just thought I had a GM one, which is, you know, common and cheap. And uh, they threw it on here and they just tried to make it work. Now, I'm gonna guess this thing has an internal voltage regulator, so that's not even needed. So I wonder if that's even, that external voltage regulator is hooked up to this. If it is, it's wrong. And I've got wires going to the firewall that are just, you know, that quick connect crap that sucks. All right, so I think I figured this out. What I found was there's an Excite wire on that alternator. And when you turn on your car, it sends power to it to power up, to activate that alternator so it kicks in. So I followed the wire for that all the way to here. While this thing was running, I checked to see if I had power here. I did not. So to test it, to see if the alternator would still work, the wire for the exciter part of it, which is soldered right there, I just took my little uh, remote start button, one end of it to there, to that exciter wire on that alternator, the other end to the positive side of my battery. 12.59, you can see when I start this thing up, drops down a little bit. 12.4, so this thing is not charging. We should be in the 14s. But if I excite that wire with this, put some power to it, look at that. 1438, hot dog, baby. We're gonna let it go, it'll drop in the hill. Hit it again. Look at that. Look at that. That's all over the place with my connections on my voltmeter, but look at that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So I knew that wire needs to go to the ignition switch. It's got a bad connection or cut, whatever. Between here and there, or wherever, right there. So, shut this off, it's loud. So there, I feel dang good. I figured that out. <laughs> Hot dog, baby, I love it. So I do, I'll fix that wire or replace it or whatever, and uh, give it a whirl and charging system, knock on wood, Hopefully it works. I mean, like I said, the wiring, this thing is immaculate, but at least, hey, they soldered connections, right? So, all right, let's get it fixed and get that done. All right, see my fancy blue wire going back to the ignition. So, hopefully it's wired up correctly. Uh, 12 and a half volts. Let's see what happens. Turn the key. Wires up. lights work. What? Nothing.
Probably should have tightened that bumper down in the front all the way. <laughs> I just realized it's missing some bolts, but such is life. All right, all right, test those brakes. Test the brakes. And he just goes and let's test the brakes. <laughs> you hear him laughing. He's been gone for a little while. Was well, he going to the Dairy Queen and back? I don't hear it either. 20 bucks as he ran out of gas. Much later. I think I hear him. Much, much, much later. There he is. I did not ever sure he ran out of gas or broke down. Kind of ticking's louder than I'll get up. I don't like that. Shut it off all the way. What? Shut it off all the way. Electric pump still going. There you go. Well, it's loud. It doesn't seem that loud, honestly. I mean, it needs exhaust, but the ticking is still loud though too. Yeah. I tell you what, it looks tough sitting out here though. Where'd you go? Around the block. You went around the whole block. You went like over there. Jeez, Adam, you're nuts. Did it shake or? Uh, a little bit. Uh, take it out. I mean, did you check the brakes even? You just like took off and the brakes was like going, yeah, okay. <laughs> the brakes are uh, okay at best. I mean, yeah, I haven't driven a car without powered brakes in a long time, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it for a spin. What the heck? How can I say no? All right, second ride. Let's see if you can get my Prius, my other baby. Are you doing you a favor? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's an insult. You know it! you damn right it is. You know why? You know why what? You know why you couldn't shift? Where it, where it downshift? Yeah, you, why you couldn't downshift? Why is that? Throttle is, the return spring needs to be stronger on this, I can feel it already. Oh yeah, those brakes? You gotta press on them, that's for sure. Yeah, I think we gotta bleed them just a little bit more than you want. I don't know how much gas you have either, so I'm not gonna do anything crazy. Right? You would've hurt me if I'd done anything crazy.
luckily it's a very feet. light car, so we can push it really easily. Yeah. But yeah, I hear that, it's running way too high. But it does, it handles good. I mean, for not having a power steering too. Yeah. Pretty good. So we made it back, even with that loose bumper. <laughs> yeah, it's loose back off. But I mean, what do you think, brother? I mean, it didn't, it's not bad. I mean, for a 1970, it, it didn't, it didn't rattle, it didn't really creak. I mean, we got it up. Steam coming off the engine right now. What? You can see a little steam coming off. Where? You can't see it? Well, you know what that is? It's just from the mess that I made. I don't oh. see it, but remember I, yeah, I let the cap off yeah. it just to get the air out, and it, it geysered up. So that's gonna happen. But no, man, it is. It's like it's cool. Oh, it's cool, and it's, it's everything I thought it would be, and honestly, more because, like you said, I after you talking about your uh, the cow, uh, your old truck that you just sold. Yeah, there I, I can see the steam. Like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the steering, knock on wood, feels tight on it. I think. God, it's been so long. We checked the steering on this, didn't we? I think so. <laughs> I think the tie rod ends and stuff. I mean, it felt tight, but we got it going in what, like what, 40? Yeah. I mean, so, that's what the speedometer said. I mean, well, I'm sure it's just super accurate. Yeah. It actually <laughs> felt close to that. Though. <laughs> like my old 55. Where's the steam? You're doing 60 and you're really doing 30. Yeah, it's just coming off the radiator, I think. So, it never, I remember I kept an eye on the, uh, on the, uh, here, let it down. I kept an eye on the temp gauge and it never got hot. So, but yeah, it's pretty sweet, brother. It's very cool. I mean, it's 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 awesome, man. I know this sounds weird, but honestly, when I was in the passenger seat, I kept thinking like, I want to be in the back seat, just kind of drive back, <laughs> see what that's like. You now, I grab the the little show bar and be like, ah, that's a show bar with beef. Oh yeah. So. It could knock on wood, probably take a roll, but just don't roll it. Yeah, I, I don't plan on it. <laughs> oh, good, good. Let's, but it's let's... nice to know it's there in case God forbid it ever happens. Yeah, well, you know, so it's just it's not down to the frame like we talked about. Yeah. But, but hey, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So. It is super cool. All right, and with that, I think that's going to be an episode. You want to say goodbye to everyone and say thanks for watching? Thank you, guys. You know, Nick would love it if I said like and subscribe, so... I suppose I'm obligated to do that. You are. Yeah, you are. So, all right, thanks again for watching. See you next time. Oh, it's cool. It is. Very cool. Yeah. Take care. Give you the mega happy ending. Oh, the mega happy ending. That's doable. <laughs>